in the example that we just considered, we looked at how we could use titration data combined with the stoichiometry of a known chemical reaction to determine the concentration of an analyte in an acid unknown. Any titration that you perform, or any titration that you're asked to analyze, whether it's acid base, potentiometric, redox, or gravimetric, obeys the same basic stoichiometry principles in terms of determining the concentration of the analyte. Some titrations may be more complex. Some may be quite straightforward, like the titration of acetic acid with hydroxide. But in terms of the problem solving process, you always begin with the key data point, which is the endpoint volume, the volume of titrant that you had to add to reach the endpoint. Then multiplying the endpoint volume by the titrant concentration will give you the number of moles of titrant delivered. Considering the reaction stoichiometry allows you to relate the moles of the titrant added to the moles of the analyte that must have been in the original sample. Then lastly, you can consider either the volume of the unknown that you started with or the mass of the solid mixture that you started with in order to determine the concentration of the analyte in the original matrix. Any titration follows this same basic thought process in terms of arriving at the analyte concentration. However, when you go into the analytical chemistry lab to do a titration, you're met with one additional problem. And this necessitates using a separate step that you may not have had to perform before when you've done titration in general chemistry or earlier science classes, which is called standardization or standardizing the titrant. And standardization is a step that needs to be done before you start the proper titration. And standardization has one goal, which is to precisely determine the concentration of the titrant that's in the burette. Now, the first thought that might occur to you is, why would we need to different experiment to precisely determine the titrant concentration when we prepared the titrant. We weighed out the solid, we dissolved it in water, we should be able to calculate the concentration. Well, it comes down to real world concerns like reactive purity and compound stability over time during storage, which may introduce error into our titrant, into our titration assay. So for instance, in our titration of acetic acid, our titrant was hydroxide. Now, Hydroxide solutions will usually be prepared from either the solid sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. And neither of these solid chemical compounds are what's known in analytical chemistry as a primary standard. A primary standard is a chemical that you can prepare a titrant solution with a precisely known concentration from the solid directly. But most chemical compounds, sodium hydroxide included, are not primary standards. For one thing, when you purchase them from a chemical company, the purest sodium hydroxide solids are only about 98% pure, which leads to an error in the concentration of the solution if you don't know the exact purity of the compound or the compound's not 100% pure. Secondly, sodium hydroxide is not particularly stable under storage as the compound is hygroscopic. It will begin to pick up water from the air, even in relatively non-humid climates, which will add to the observed mass when you weigh out the sodium hydroxide. Now this can be compensated for with, a cup, with good analytical lab technique, like weighing the sodium hydroxide by difference. But in general, between the purity and the relative instability of the compound, when we prepare a sodium hydroxide aqueous solution in the lab, we can get a good idea of the titrant's concentration based on basic stoichiometry calculations, but we can't be certain of the exact concentration with the required accuracy that you need to really nail your analyte's concentration. And so adding a standardization step to your titration procedure is the answer. And in a standardization step, what you're going to do is you're going to establish the concentration of the titrant by doing a titration before your titration and titrating your titrant against a primary standard. I probably said titrant too many times in that sentence, for any reasonable person to follow what I just said. So I'm gonna break it down using a new example. First, going back a step. If we, the general idea is if we wanted to establish the concentration of our sodium hydroxide and know the concentration of that titrant solution before we started our acetic acid titration, we could run a titration against another acid like potassium hydrogen phthalate or KHP which is what you saw in the video that we kicked off this titration module with. 
because KHP is a primary standard and we can prepare solutions we can prepare aqueous solutions of KHP with known concentrations right on the bench top. And so knowing the number of moles of KHP that go into solution, we can run a titration of KHP using the hydroxide solution we prepared, and we can determine the concentration of the hydroxide solution because we know the number of moles of KHP that we put in the flask. That's standardization. It's like a titration before the titration where the purpose is to establish the concentration of the titrant with really good accuracy. Looking at this in another example, we are going to end on Monday our titration module doing a more complex titration data problem where we talk about a redox titration between oxalic acid and permanganate that results in manganese 2 plus and the release of CO2 gas. In this titration, you don't need a separate indicator because permanganate itself has a nice purple color which fades as soon as it undergoes the redox reaction with oxalic acid. So the idea is you can spot the endpoint in this titration as soon as you see a faint hint of purple that persists in the flask. That means there's excess permanganate and all the oxalic acid has been used up. So the full balanced chemical equation is five moles of oxalic acid react with two moles of permanganate and six moles of protons to, to form two moles of manganese ion 2 plus, eight moles of water, and 10 moles of CO2. Every reactant and product in this chemical equation is a colorless chemical species, except for the permanganate, which is bright purple. The idea in using this titration is ultimately to establish the concentration of oxalate or oxalic acid in a chemical unknown. And this can be used indirectly for things like determining the concentration of calcium in a urine sample, which is what our example on Friday will cover. So this is actually a titration that has a lot of biomedical relevance and can be used to assay for kidney stones and similar problems in your urinary tract. Now, just like potassium hydroxide, if I pull some potassium permanganate off the shelf, Potassium permanganate is not a primary standard. I don't know with the required accuracy for the analytical lab what the concentration of that permanganate solution is going to be if I just take 5 grams of permanganate and dissolve it in 50 milliliters of total solution. I'll have a good idea based on my calculations, but because of the purity associated with this chemical when you buy it and its instability under storage, that concentration may be off. So in order to establish the concentration of my titrant, which would be my potassium permanganate solution, I have to go ahead and do a titration against oxalic acid in order to establish the concentration of my titrant. Oxalic acid is a primary standard. It's a chemical that you can buy and its supplier will certify that it's better than 99.5% pure. It's stable under low levels of heating. It's stable under storage, and it's stable against oxidation. So you can keep it on the stockroom shelf for a long time, and when you need to pull it out and use it, the only thing you have to do is heat it for a short period in the oven to drive off any water that may have stuck to the crystals during its storage, and it's still pure and it's ready to go. So sodium oxalate counts as a primary standard, and you can buy it from a number of different chemicals providers. The bottle we're showing here is from Flynn Scientific. Sodium oxalate has the chemical formula Na2C2O4, and the reason it's useful as a primary standard is if I weigh out 0 0.500 grams of sodium oxalate and I dissolve it in 500 milliliters of water, I will know the concentration of that sodium oxalate because the reagent is pure and it won't have degraded if I was storing it properly. Now what I can do with that then is I can take that sodium oxalate I can dissolve it in water, which will give me two moles of sodium plus one and one mole of oxalate. This oxalate is the conjugate base of hydrogen oxalate, which is the conjugate base of oxalic acid. And so if I acidify this solution, I can regenerate oxalic acid. And if I put in an excess of protons, I will get one mole of oxalic acid for every mole of oxalate that I put in. Because my oxalate was a primary standard, as long as I acidified the solution correctly, I know the exact concentration of the oxalic acid in my solution to be titrated. 
I can then run a titration where I use the concentration of the oxalic acid to establish the concentration of permanganate in my titrate. And that's what standardization really is. It's like a titration that you do before the titration, but the titration is run not with the goal of determining the concentration of the unknown, but exactly determining the concentration of the titrate. It may help, this is a concept that's hard to explain using only slides, it may help to go back to the video that I posted at the start of the titration module, watch what they do in that standardization step. That titration they're running is the titration that we started talking about, which is a titration of acetic acid with sodium hydroxide. And in that video, they show you both the standardization of the sodium hydroxide solution they prepare against potassium hydrogen phthalate in order to standardize the hydroxide, and then they show you the titration with, with the standardized hydroxide solution against acetic acid to determine the acetic acid concentration. The bottom line to remember about standardization is that standardizations are run to determine the concentration of the titrant so that you can use a titrant solution with a very accurately known concentration in your titration experiment. So don't forget that we have quiz number one today that, should be, that will open up for you by Thursday night at 8 p.m. It's due Sunday night at 5 p.m. There are, if I remember correctly, five multiple choice questions worth three points each. There are two short answer questions worth five points each. If the quiz gives you any problems, please let me know. But remember that quiz is due Sunday at 5 p.m. When we come back to class online on Monday, we will pick up with some examples where we show you standardization data and titration data and use them to solve and use them to determine the concentration of an analyte in a redox titration. I will see you then.